Today, we gather to reflect upon the tragic tale of Jephthah, the judge of Israel, as recounted in the book of Judges, chapter 11. Through the story of Jephthah, we will explore the profound lesson that the further a culture moves away from the understanding of the true God, the more problems they will inevitably encounter. Jephthah, a valiant warrior, was the son of Gilead and a prostitute woman, which led to his exile when his brothers rejected him. He sought refuge in the land of Tob and eventually rose to become the leader of a band of raiders. When the Ammonites waged war against Israel, the elders of Gilead turned to Jephthah for help. Jephthah agreed to help, but under the condition that he would become the leader of the people, if victorious. Before embarking on the battle against the Ammonites, Jephthah made a tragic vow to the Lord. He vowed that whoever came out of the doors of his house first to greet him upon his victorious return would be offered as a burnt offering to the Lord. With the Lord's help, Jephthah emerged victorious in the battle. However, upon his return, it was his beloved daughter who joyfully emerged from his house, celebrating his triumph with tambourines and dancing. Heartbreakingly, Jephthah realized the gravity of his vow and tore his clothes, crying out in anguish. He exclaimed, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord and I cannot go back on it. In response, his daughter, with deep understanding and faith, replied, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what has come out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies. After spending two months in the mountains weeping, she returned to her father, and he did to her as he had vowed. The story of Jephthah serves as a poignant reminder that as a culture drifts further from the understanding of the true God, it can lead to moral and ethical dilemmas, bringing about a host of problems and challenges. The tragedy we will witness in Jephthah's story is a direct result of the people adopting the view that their God was no different from the pagan gods of the time. This departure from the true understanding of God's nature and his moral principles is reflected in Deuteronomy 12, 31, where God explicitly warns against the abhorrent practice of sacrificing one's child. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way, because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. Join me as we take a closer look at this painful story that has raised many questions. Jephthah is introduced in Judges chapter 11. This was a time when Israel was in a state of turmoil and instability. The Israelites repeatedly fell into idolatry and disobedience to God and pagan rituals were widespread. Jephthah was a mighty warrior with a big problem. His mother was a prostitute. His half-brothers had him exiled as they did not want him to receive any of their father's inheritance. So Jephthah goes to Tob, where he becomes the leader of a gang of mercenaries before being offered the highest position in Gilead if he can help them defeat their enemies, the Ammonites. Jephthah will reveal early on in the story that he does not understand Yahweh, the God of Israel. In verse 24, Jephthah reveals his ignorance when he asks the king of the Ammonites, Will you not take what your God Chemosh gives you? Likewise, whatever the Lord our God has given us, we will possess. This is early evidence that Jephthah sees God as being equal to the false pagan gods in the area. He directly compares God to these false gods and encourages the Ammonites to take what they've been given by their God and the Israelites will do the same with their God. Jephthah doesn't understand that God is the God of all people and all kingdoms. He has instead bought into the idea that they're all the same. This will ultimately come back to hurt Jephthah because we will see that if you see God incorrectly, you will also worship him incorrectly. The king of the Ammonites ignores this message from Jephthah 
and God empowers Jephthah to recruit a strong army and Jephthah prepared to fight. This is when Jephthah makes his infamous vow. If you give the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Let's look closer at this vow made by Jephthah, as it has sparked a lot of debate among biblical commentators. There has been speculation regarding the nature of Jephthah's vow, with some suggesting that it might not have been meant as a literal sacrifice. These interpretations propose that Jephthah intended that whoever came out of his house would be dedicated to the service of the Lord. However, it is unlikely that this was the case. First, as we mentioned earlier, the Book of Judges depicts a dark and chaotic time when the Mosaic Law was being ignored for pagan rituals. Human sacrifices were not uncommon during this dark time. Furthermore, the sacrifice of the firstborn, particularly in the context of military victory, was a prevalent custom among the neighboring cultures to Israel. This cultural influence from the surrounding societies might have played a significant role in shaping Jephthah's tragic vow. Also, Jephthah's devastated reaction at the sight of his only daughter coming out of the house would not make sense if he were only planning on consecrating her to the temple. Everything indicates that she is going to be sacrificed in the literal sense. This raises a fundamental question. How could God empower Jephthah despite the solemn and troubling nature of his vow? It's crucial to recognize that God's empowerment of individuals does not necessarily reflect their personal spirituality or moral standing. Throughout the Bible, we see instances where God empowers individuals for specific tasks, regardless of their spiritual disposition. In Jephthah's case, God enabled him to assemble an army, gather followers, and confront the enemy. However, it was Jephthah who misunderstood God's intentions and sought to negotiate with him. It's essential to remember that God cannot be manipulated to align with our desires, and furthermore, he has unequivocally denounced child sacrifices as abhorrent. Jephthah's misinterpretation and attempts to bargain with God ultimately led to the tragic sacrifice of his own daughter. There are several key lessons that emerge from the story of Jephthah. First and foremost, it teaches us that attempting to negotiate or strike deals with God is fundamentally flawed. Expressing things like, I'll do this if you do that, simply do not align with the nature of our God. God is not a transactional entity. Statements like, I've been attending church, so my life should improve, hold no validity. God seeks a genuine relationship with us, not bargains or attempts at manipulation. The second crucial lesson from Jephthah's story is that we must not gauge spirituality by success alone. Despite Jephthah's impressive accomplishments, including his victory over the Ammonites and his rise to leadership, he was a deeply flawed individual who strayed from God's will. Ultimately, his misguided actions resulted in the tragic loss of his daughter. This underscores the fact that outward success does not necessarily reflect one's spiritual alignment with God. Frequently, we tend to associate a smooth life and the fulfillment of our desires with God's approval. However, when we examine the individuals God uses in the Bible, with the exception of Jesus Christ, we find that they are all flawed sinners. You might currently find yourself amidst challenges or facing failures, leading to the question, why is this happening to me, especially when my heart is devoted to God? It's important to understand that our spirituality is intricately tied to our relationship with Christ, and our ability to treat others with the same grace that Christ has shown us. True spirituality is not gauged by the balance in our bank accounts or the worldly success we achieve. Father God, 
We acknowledge that Jephthah made a crucial mistake in believing that our success equates to your favor. Jephthah made the crucial mistake in thinking we can negotiate or barter with you to get our way. Lord, we realize that our own desires can often lead us down perilous paths, harming both others and ourselves. We pray today, Lord, that we will see you as you are and worship you as you are, and that by doing so, you would be pleased and we would be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen.